Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you tonight. We bless your name. Thank you for your people. Happy people. Thank you, Lord, for your people. Blessed people. Thank you for our people here, favored people. And I pray that, Lord, you open the windows of heaven. And you shower your blessings upon them in Jesus' name. We take every hindrance out of the way. Everything, any seed that will hinder anyone, we take it out of their ways in Jesus' name. Pour your salvation down. Pour your healing down. Pour your deliverance down. Pour your prosperity down. And Lord, I pray nobody will live here empty handed tonight in Jesus' name. Touch every life and turn everyone around. I thank you for the miracle already that everyone is going to receive. The sick will be healed. The oppressed will be delivered. Tonight is our night of freedom. I thank you because I know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you very much. It's starting already. And all through the message, just pay attention. You just discover your problems are gone. I'm talking to you tonight before we pray on the highway to abundant overflowing blessings. The highway, the expressway to abundant overflowing blessings. I'm reading from Psalm 1. I'm looking at Psalm 1. I'm reading from verse 1. It says, blessed is the man. Who is the man? Blessed is the man. Now, when you hear a man here, it's not just of you know, the male. It's male and female. That word in the original is mankind. That means, blessed is the person. Blessed is the man, and blessed is the woman. What kind of man? What kind of woman that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners? nor seated in the seat of discomfort. It's describing to us here the blessed man. Actually, you see, the book of Psalms starts with blessedness. Just like the Sermon of the Mount, the Sermon of the Lord Jesus Christ, it started with the way to blessing. And here the psalm is telling us how you can be blessed. In the original, that word blessed is in the plural. It means blessedness in the plural. All kinds of blessings. Salvation is here today. Healing is here today. Deliverance is here today. Provision is here today. Prosperity is here today. And all that sin that have been following after you, wanting to destroy your life, tonight I announce to them they will go. And all that captivity where you have been, all the things holding you down, I come to tell your Pharaoh, let my people go. And whether he likes it or not, tonight you're free. Tonight you're delivered. Your wife will be free. Your children will be free. If the children have not come, I'm announcing to them, why are they getting late? Miracle children, come quickly. And your miracle children are coming in Jesus' name. And so he talks about the multiplicity of blessings that will come upon the people who believe in the Lord. I see believers there tonight. I see receivers there tonight. You believe, you receive. And you receive because you believe. Believers are there. And those who are coming for the first time, tonight God will surprise you with miracle. He says, blessed is the man. And now he begins to describe the man. He describes the man, number one, negatively. Number two, he describes the man positively. Number three, he describes the man practically. In the negative sense, he tells us that man that is blessed, he will not walk like this. He will not stand here. He will not sit there. And then in the, in the positive, he tells us he will do this and do this and do that. Actually, I'll be talking about you tonight. Because you are the candidate for miracle. What you see there? Amen. It's coming. The highway to abundance, overflowing blessings. There are three things we're going to talk about. Number one, 
the partakers of God's abundant blessings. The partakers of God's abundant blessings. Then number two, I'll be talking to you on the prevention of God's announced benevolence. The prevention, the things that are people, they hinder themselves. And they close the door against their own miracle. But tonight, that door that is closed, the key will come. We are going to open your door. And all the things that have been hindering you and preventing you. When I come to that point, I'll tell you. And then we'll open the door and your miracles will flow in. Number three, the promise of God's abiding benefits. Abiding benefits. What you receive today will abide. My miracle will abide. My miracle will stay. My miracle will be permanent. You know, some people, if they get something after a week or two or one month, it's gone. The one we're getting here tonight, one month is still there. One year, it's still there. And for the rest of your life, miracles, 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 permanent. And uh, it will remain with you in Jesus' name. Let's come now to Psalm number one. Psalm one, and I'm reading from verse one. We're looking at the partakers of God's abundant blessings the partakers who are these we're told about them look at them in verse one blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly nor standeth in the seat in the way of sinners nor seated in the seat of discomfort verse two but it is delight is in the law of the lord and in his law does he meditate day and night. He shall be, I will be. He shall be, I will be. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. You will be fruitful. Your wife will be fruitful. Your children will be fruitful. The work of your hand will be fruitful. And then it says, his leaf also shall not wither. I like this one. And whatsoever, and whatsoever, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Look up at me here. Whatsoever I do will prosper. Say it for yourself. Whatsoever I do will prosper. As you wake up tomorrow morning, and then you are going to your place of work, prosperity is going to follow after you. Whatsoever I do will prosper. Can you say that again? Whatsoever I do will prosper. Now let's look at the person we're talking about. Blessed is the man. It says, number one, that walketh not. Number two, that standeth not. Number three, that seateth not. Now you will see, it talks about the ungodly. It talks about the sinner. It talks about the sin, discomfort. And it says, you don't, if you're going to be blessed, and I see blessed people there, and because you're going to be blessed, it says, you will not stand with the ungodly. And it says, you will not walk with the sinners. And it says, you will not see each of this comfort. Can you see how the sinners, how the unbelievers, they go down? It says, first of all, they are walking with the ungodly. Then they, stop, they don't just stop at that. Now they are walking. And then it says, they are standing with the sinners. And then they are sitting. You see the people, they go from one level of sin to another. And they go from one level of ungodliness to another. They walk, they stand, and they sit. But it says, if you're going to be the one, the man God blesses, and you're going to be the woman that God blesses, it says, you will not stand with the ungodly or the sinners. You will not walk with them, and you will not sit with them. Now, what does that say? It says, number one, you are free from the counsel of the ungodly. They don't counsel you. You know, there are people, they have any problem, and they want to seek the counseling. It says, no, you don't do that. You don't walk with the ungodly. You are not seeking the counsel of the ungodly. And then it says, you will not stand with them. What does that mean? You will not be in their company. And then number three, you are not sitting with them. You will not have anything to do with the concept 
of the sinners or of the scornful. Number one, their counsel will not be part of your life. If you're going to be blessed, you have to do something about that. That's why it tells you in Proverbs chapter 1. Proverbs chapter 1, I'm reading from verse 10. It says, my son, if sinners entice thee, consent thou not. Sinners would like to advise you. This is how we smoke. This is how we drink. This is how we do evil. But it says, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. All those ungodly people, all those sinful people, people of iniquity, people of sin, it says, they will want to counsel you and they say, and that's why uh, the Proverbs tells you, my son, if sinners entice you, if sinners tempt you, if sinners invite you, if sinners try to influence you, if sinners try to counsel you, it says, consent thou not. Look at verse 15. In verse 15, it says, my son, walk not thou in the way with them. Refrain thy foot from their path. It says, my son, don't walk with them. Why is he saying don't talk with them? Because you want to be blessed. You want to receive the blessing of God because it says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. Number two, you do not take to their company. You do not stay with their company because it says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. What if you don't do that, but now you stand in the, in the way of the sinners? Sinners have their ways. You see the people who use their body for money, they have their way of doing that. And it says, you will not do that. And the people who smoke, they have their way of smoking. The people who join gangs and the people who belong to cause, they have their way. That's why it says, let the sinner forsake his way. And your righteous man is thought and let him return unto the Lord. If you have been far away, tonight is the night to return. And when you return, blessings will come upon you. The Lord will forgive you anything you have done in the past while you are far away from the Lord. Tonight, God says, I want to forgive you. I want to cleanse you. I want to change your life. He will cleanse you and change your life in Jesus' name. And if you're a believer, they have been calling you and you have been under real serious pressure and temptation. It says, you want to have the blessings of God, many blessings, multiple blessings, manifold blessings. It says, there's something you are not going to do. You will not walk in the way of the sinners. And that will bring power into your life. Power is coming upon your life. Am I talking to somebody there today? Power is coming. Everybody say power. And let me show you in Ecclesiastes chapter 8. Ecclesiastes chapter 8. And I'm reading here from verse 8. Remember, it's talking about the blessed man. It says, this man will not walk in the way of the sinners. He will not stand with them. Neither will he sit with them. Ecclesiastes chapter 8. And we're looking at verse 3. Ecclesiastes chapter 8, verse 3. Be not hasty to go out of a sight stand not in an evil scene don't stand there stand not in an evil scene when you see people doing evil you see people committing sin you see people that they do things you know if the government catches them then trouble you know that when God catches them, they're in trouble. And it says, you will not stand in the evil sin, for he doeth whatsoever pleases him. Look at verse 4. Where the word of a king is, there is what? There's power. You see, once you obey verse 3, and you're not standing with those sinners, you're not staying with them, you say, I come out of that. I come out of evil. And then you come to the side of the Lord. You say, Lord, I'm not walking in the way of the, of the sinners. I'm not standing in the way of the sinners. I come out of evil. It says, it will give you power. And power and authority will come upon your life. And it says, where the word of the king is, there is power. And then it says, nobody can tell him what doest thou. That power is coming upon your life tonight in Jesus' name. 
as you come to Psalm 1 verse 1 we're still looking at that man at the blessed man and this is the negative description of the man because he stands he walks not and he stands not and he sits not it tells us in that uh, chapter 1 reading from verse 1 it says blessed is the man and this is the man that does not uh, walk in the counsel of the ungodly. This is the man that does not stand in the way of sinners. And is the man that sitteth not in the seat of this comfort. He is the man that seated not in the seat of this comfort. Now it tells you those three postures that you're not going to have with the unbelievers. You're not staying with the unbelievers when they are drinking their whatever they are drinking in their nightclub. And you're not having any association with them. You say, I come out. I come out. I'm not part of them. I'll not walk with them. I'll not stand with them. I'll not sit with them. And you're paving your way to blessing because that is the highway way to blessing and that is the express way to blessing and when you come out of that maybe you came out before but now little by little you're trying to walk with them ah you're going to lose a lot of things or maybe you are now sitting with them and you are planning together and you are discussing together and they are telling you what to do and you are telling let's do it this way that way you are joined with some believers and it says your blessings will not be will be delayed but as the blessing is is coming tonight blessed is a man and blessed is a woman that walketh not in the way in the counsel of the ungodly are you there am i talking about you i will not walk in their counsel i will not stay in their company and i will not walk in their concept and when you do that and you give yourself totally to the lord and say lord here am i i come out of everything completely and i come out of every evil completely i come out of anything that is sinful anything idolatrous anything that is occultic anything that is immoral anything that is abomination unto you i come out of everything and then as you come out like that you fulfill part one because it says blessed is the man and blessed said is the woman that walketh not in that that standeth not in that that seated not in that we're talking about the blessed man blessed is the man which man is that the man that is separated from the world which man is that number two the man that is saturated by the word saturated by the word because he gives attention to the world and he gives affection to the world and he has assimilation of the world number one he is separated from the world number two he is saturated with the world look at verse three now that is psalm one verse three it says and he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season his leaf also shall not wither and whatsoever and whatsoever and whatsoever whatsoever he doeth shall tell me out loud time of prosperity has come the year of prosperity has come this is a period in your life this is going to be the best year you ever lived in your life in jesus name look at this man this is number one remember this man the man that will be blessed who is the man who is the woman he says number one he is separated from the world he does not walk in the way of sinners of the scoffers of the ungodly he does not stand with them and he does not see it with them he's separated from the world number two is saturated with the world number three is situated by the waters he is situated by the waters look at him here it says it shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season his leaf also shall not wither and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper and so we're talking about the partakers of god's abundant blessing who are they they're the people who are separated from the world 
who are they? They are people who are saturated with the word. Who are they? They are people who are situated by the waters. These are people that will not walk or the ungodly. These are the people that will not stand or the sinners. These are the people that will not siege or the scoffers. These are the people that have affection for the world. These are the people that have the assimilation of the world. These are people that have attention to the world. These are people who are permanent in the body of Christ in the church. And their seat is always occupied in the church. There's no time you'll say they couldn't come today. They're always there. You'll always be there. I said you'll always be there. You'll be permanent there in Jesus' name. And then you're productive. Their productivity and you're prospered in Jesus' name. I'm coming back to someone. I'm reading now from verse 4. There are some people that hinder themselves. There are people that prevent themselves from the blessing of the law. You will not prevent yourself. You will not hinder yourself. The blessing of the Lord will flow through your life in Jesus' name. I'm looking at chapter 1 of the Psalms. I'm looking at verse 4. It says, the ungodly are not so. Ah, that is, the ungodly, they are not permanent. The ungodly are not so. The ungodly are not so. They are not productive. The ungodly are not so. They don't prosper in every area. And it says, the ungodly are not so, but they are like the child, which the wind drives away. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment. And then it says, no sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous. But the way of the ungodly shall perish. It says something about them. It's talking about the people that hinder themselves. You see, there are people like that. The river of life is there. They will not drink. And the healing virtue is there to flow through their body. They will not believe. And the prosperity is there from the Lord. They will not take it. And the Lord is saying, I would have blessed them. I would have uh, changed their lives. I would have converted them. I would have saved them. But they would not. Look at Psalm 81. Psalm 81. I'm reading from verse 10. Psalm 81. And we're reading from verse 10. These are the people that miss out by themselves. The Lord wanted to bless them. But they would not be blessed because they hinder themselves. They prevent themselves. Look at verse 10. It says, I am the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Open thy mouth wide. Tell me the rest. Tell me out loud. And I will feel it. Here God says, open your mouth wide. And I will feel it. Look at verse 11. But my people would not Hacking to my voice, Israel would none of me. He said, I wanted to bless them. I wanted to make them prosper. I wanted to make them productive. I wanted to overload them with blessing. Every day, he says, but they prevent themselves. They hinder themselves. Not so the unbelievers. Not so the ungodly. Because they're like chaff that the wind drives away. Look at verse 13. Oh, that my people... At hearkened unto me, and Israel had walked in my ways, I should soon have subdued their enemies and turned my hand against their adversaries. He said, If they had listened to me, if they had not hindered themselves, I would have blessed them, and the abundance of blessing would have been upon them. Look at verse 16. He should have fed them also with the finest of wheat. And with honey out of the rock should I have satisfied thee. He said, but he will not listen. But he will not believe. But he will not accept the word of God. He said, the ungodly are not so, not so. They are like chaff. Driven away. Look at Jeremiah chapter 5. Jeremiah chapter 5. The people that hinder their own salvation. The people that hinder their own healing. The people that hinder their own 
deliverance. It says in chapter 5 of Jeremiah. Chapter 5 of Jeremiah, reading from verse 25. Here in verse 25, see what it says. In verse 25, it says, Your iniquities have turned away these things, and your sins serve withholding good things from you. Those were the people. The iniquities hindered them. The iniquities prevented them. They will not confess their sin. They will not forsake their sin. They will not come out of sin. They will not come out of evil. They will not come out of their drunkenness, out of their smoking, out of their fleshly practice. They will not come out of their occultism. They will not come out of their idolatry. It says because of that, good things are withheld from them. Look at chapter 6 of Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 6, and I'm reading here from verse 16. Thus says the Lord, stand ye in the ways, and see, and ask for the old paths, where is the good way, and walk therein, and ye shall find, and ye shall find rest for your souls, but the search will not walk therein, we will not walk therein. Therein. And that's, that's the reason why the blessings of God could not come upon them. That's what, look at verse 18. Therefore, hear ye, hear ye nations, and know, O, con o congregation, what is among them? Hear, O earth, verse 19, behold, I'll bring evil upon these people. He wanted to bless them. That's why I said, stand in the way and see and ask for the old path and i will show you good things but he said no 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 we will not walk therein i pray that will not happen to you that you will not hinder your own blessing in jesus name we're looking at matthew chapter 23 verse 37 matthew chapter 23 verse 37 O oh, jerusalem jerusalem Thou that killest the prophets and stonest them, which are sent unto you, how often would I have gathered thy children together, even as a hen gathereth her chickens under her wings? Tell me the rest. And ye would not. And ye would not. I would have blessed you. And you would not. I would have healed you. And you would not. I would have satisfied you with miracles and blessings. And you would not. And they will say, I have my own religion. And they will say, I have my own place. They will say, I just came here to visit. I just came here as a spectator. Thank God I am not a spectator. I said, I'm not a spectator. The Lord wanted to bless them. And he said, I would have blessed you. I would have protected you. I would have delivered you. But ye would not. And because they would not, that's why their problem remains with them. Let's come back to Psalm 1. I'm reading here from verse 4. Psalm 1, reading from verse 4. Here the Lord is talking about the people who hinder themselves from blessing. The people who stop themselves from receiving the blessings of the Lord. It says, the ungodly are not so. But they are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. Number one, that's their description. Their description. They don't have any substance. Chaff does not have substance. Chaff is something that the wind will just blow away because it's so light. And when people take the wheat or they take the corn or they take the rice, they blow all the chaff away. And it says the people that hinder themselves from the blessings of the Lord, they're like chaff. That's the description number two, their destruction. Their destruction. Because chaff is made for the fire. Chaff meant for the fire. It says these people that hinder themselves, these people that prevent themselves from 
the blessing of God, they are not real. They, are not, they don't have substance. They don't have value. They don't have worth. They don't have weight. They are like chaff. They are insignificant. They are useless. I presented salvation to them. They said no. I wanted to heal them. They said no. I wanted to deliver them. They said no. I wanted to take them to heaven. They said no. I wanted to forgive their sin. They said no. I wanted to set them free. They said no. All right, then it will be like chaff. Look at Matthew chapter 3. Matthew chapter 3, and I'm reading from verse 12. Matthew chapter 3, verse 12. Number one, the description, what are they, chaff? Number two, their destruction. What happens to them? We we'll find that in Matthew chapter 3, and we're looking at it from verse 12. It says, Whose fine is in the sun, and it will thoroughly purge its floor, and gather the wheat into the garner, and he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. He will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. The people that reject God's salvation. The people that reject Christ's redemption and the people that hinder themselves from getting salvation, from being forgiven, and they say they don't walk, they want to walk in the highway of blessing. Then God says, I'll give them what they deserve, I'll give them destruction. Then let's come back to some one. And we're reading now from verse 5. It says in verse 5, therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment. The ungodly shall not stand in the judgment. What does that mean? It means that they will not have legs to stand. And they will not have authority to stand. When the day of judgment comes, in fact it says, their sin will close their mouth. Their defenselessness. Their defenselessness. Jesus said, I want to be your lawyer. I want to be your advocate. I want to defend you. I want to defend you before the Father. Because it says, little children, I write unto you that you sin not. But if anyone sees, we have an advocate with the Father. Jesus Christ, the righteous. He wanted to take on their case. He wanted to plead with them so that they'll be forgiven, they'll be saved. But the ungodly are not so. And they say, I don't want Jesus I don't want him to defend me. I don't want him to forgive me. I don't want him to justify me. And it says, when the day of judgment comes, they have nobody to defend them. But we who are children of God, we know that Christ will defend us. Rock of ages, clear for me. Let me hide myself in thee. Let the water and the blood from your wounded side with flood be of sin, the double kill, cleansing me from the shame and from the sorrow and from the defilement of sin. When I close my eyes in death and stand before your judgment throne, rock of ages, clear for me, let me hide myself in thee. He is our defender. He is our lawyer. He is our advocate. But the people that say, no, 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 I don't want Jesus Christ. And let me live by myself. I want to keep on walking in the way of the sinner of the ungodly. I want to keep on standing in the way of the sinners. I want to keep on sitting in the seat of this comfort. It says, okay, you want to be left to yourself. You'll be defenseless on that final day. I pray that you'll not be like that. I come to point number three now. The promise of God's abiding benefits. The promise of God's abiding benefits look at uh, psalm 1 i'm reading the first part of verse 1 and the first part of verse 6 to bracket everything together look at this blessed is the man blessed is the man look at verse 6 for the lord knoweth the way of the righteous blessed is the man who is the man verse 6 says is the righteous blessed is the man blessed is the redeemed who is the man blessed is the ransomed who is this man? Blessed is the righteous. Who is this man? Blessed is the upright. Who is this man? Blessed is the one that comes into the kingdom of God. And he says, yes, I believe. Uh, come back to that verse 1. Chapter 1, verse 1. Blessed is the man. Blessed is the man. Who is this man? Psalm 32 tell you. Psalm 32, who is this man that is blessed? You can identify yourself. Whether you are the man, whether you are the woman or not, blessed is the man. Look at Psalm 32 verse 2. Blessed is the man unto whom the Lord imputeth not iniquity, and in whose spirit 
There is no guile. There's no deceit. There's no hypocrisy. It says the man that comes out of sin and he comes to the Savior and he says, I receive Jesus as my Savior. I believe in him. It says, blessed is the man that the Lord will not impute iniquity because the Lord has forgiven him. Look at chapter 34. Chapter 34, Psalm 34. I'm reading from verse 8. O taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. These are the people that are blessed. You trust in the Lord. You trust him for salvation. I'm not trusting the works of my hand. I'm not trusting my good work. I'm not trusting giving money to the beggars. I'm not tr tr trusting in being a good natured person. Blessed is the man that trusts in the Lord. I believe the Lord. I see him at Calvary. And I know he died for me. I accept that. I believe that. I receive that. And I know because I receive that, that's my only hope. And that's my only confidence. I trust in the Lord. That's what the Lord is saying to you. He says, blessed is a man. You trust him. You believe him. And because you trust him, you believe him. He takes your sins away. Blessed is a man. Look at Psalm 40. I'm reading from verse 4. Psalm 40, I'm reading from verse 4. It says, Blessed is that man that maketh the Lord his trust. Blessed is that man. He makes a personal choice. He makes a personal decision. It says, He will be my savior. He will be my healer. He'll be my deliverer. I know with him all things are possible. And because with him all things are possible, I surrender. I give myself unto him. I would lean on him. I will depend on him. I will not look at idols. I will not depend on family idol, family religion. I trust him and trust him alone. He says, blessed is that man that maketh the Lord his trust and respecteth not the proud nor so has turned aside to lies. It says, he will not follow after backsliders. He will not copy backsliders. He will not meddle with them that are giving to change. He gives himself totally to the Lord. And the Lord says, blessed is that man. I hope I'm describing your life. I said, I hope I'm describing your life. You'll be blessed in Jesus' name. Psalm 65, I'm reading from verse 4. Psalm 65, I'm reading from verse 4. It says, Blessed is the man whom thou choosest. Blessed is the man whom thou choosest. Many are called, but few are chosen. Many are called. The Lord calls you. And the people that respond immediately, Yes, Lord, I am here. Yes, Lord, I believe. Yes, Lord, I repent. Yes, Lord, I believe you. I believe you for my salvation. I believe you for my healing. I believe you for my deliverance. I believe you for my miracle. Your miracle has come. Because blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. And blessed is the man that standeth not in the way of the sinners. Blessed is the man that seateth not in the seat of the scornful. Blessed is the man because his delight is in the watch of the Lord. And in his word does he meditate day and night. He shall be, I will be, he shall be, you will be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season and it says your leaf also shall not wither and whatsoever you do you will prosper the ungodly are not so because the ungodly are like chaff driven by the wind therefore the ungodly shall not stand in judgment and the sinners shall not stand in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. I will not perish. I said I will not perish. In this life, I will not perish. In the world to come, I will not perish. The blessing of the Lord is available right now. Salvation available, healing available, deliverance available, forgiveness available, and everything we need from the Lord, your miracle is ready right now. Anybody available there to take it? Why don't you stand up and say, Lord, I am ready. Lord, I am ready. I want you to open your mouth to the Lord and tell the Lord, you have seen the description. 
You have seen the definition. And you have seen the people that are the blessed people of the Lord. You will tell the Lord, I will be that man. I will be that woman. Open your mouth and tell the Lord, any sin in your life? Any evil in your life? Any iniquity in your life? Secret sin? Besetting sin? Are you that ungodly man? Why don't you repent? Why don't you say, Lord, I give that up. I will not be an ungodly man. I will not be an ungodly woman. Give it up. In Jesus' name we pray. And the blessed people said, Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for our new brothers and new sisters. I thank you, Lord, for those you have called. Many are called, but few are chosen. These people who are called, they have responded. Choose them and bring them to your kingdom in Jesus' name. Anywhere they are hearing the sound of my voice now, forgive them in Jesus' name. They have left the path of the ungodly. They have forsaken the path of the sinner. And they have totally abandoned the way of discomfort. And I pray you give them the grace and the strength. They will no more go back there in Jesus' name. Give them forgiveness. Give them freedom. Give them deliverance. Give them authority. And give them victory. That they will not go back into those evil things anymore in Jesus' name. Plant them in your kingdom. I pray, Lord, your salvation will be permanent. Their salvation will bring productivity. Their salvation will result in, in, uh, in prosperity. And I pray, Lord, from today, a new change will come to them in Jesus' name. Salvation has come. Eternal life has come. Forgiveness has come. Freedom has come. Make it permanent for them. Thank you, Lord, because I know you have answered. In Jesus' name, I pray. What are the candidates for miracle? Keep up that. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you tonight because I know this is our miracle day. And I send forth your power upon everyone right now in Jesus' name. From the top of their head to the tip of their toe. Lord, I pray your power will operate. The miracle will come in there. Total redemption. Complete healing. And total deliverance you give to your people in Jesus' name. That brain problem there, I command that brain problem, come out in Jesus' name. That demonic affliction, satanic affliction, I command you there, come out in Jesus' name. All those things, oppressive spirits walking about in the body, oppressing you the night, oppressing you the day, this is your final minute. And I command those oppressive objects, get out in Jesus' name. I sprinkle the blood of Jesus upon you, upon your room, upon your house, upon your market, anywhere you go. I sprinkle the blood of Jesus on you. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. All those oppressive spirits are gone. They will never come back again. Be free and be delivered in Jesus' name. The person that has a pain in any part of your body, I command that pain in your stomach, in the kidney, and also in your livers, in your lungs. I command that pain, come out in Jesus' name. I pronounce healing. I pronounce deliverance. Receive that healing in Jesus' name. The pain inside those ears, I command pain be healed in Jesus' name. All those things that torture your body, all those things that harass your life, this is the end. I command that torture, I command that terrible spirit, 
And I command all those things scratching you as if you scratch yourself with almost something sharp and blood be coming out. Be free in Jesus' name. Insanity, madness in the family, and then it's almost getting to you. I stop that spirit right there. You spirit of insanity, I command you, don't move there, don't go there, don't go there anymore. You're free in Jesus' name. I pray for those who have any hospital challenge. You've gone to the hospital, you've got an x-ray. They say this one is wrong, that one is wrong. I pray that you get your miracle right now. Receive your healing right now. Receive your miracle right now. Lord, I pray for everyone anywhere they call, anywhere there's something they call sickness. Anywhere there's something they call infirmity. Anything that they call oppression, I stop it in their lives right now. You are free. You are healed. You are delivered. Receive your miracle in Jesus' name. Lord, I bring their business before you. The works of their hand I bring before you. You promised us, you said, whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. I pronounce prosperity. I proclaim prosperity. I prophesy prosperity into every one of your lives in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray poverty will vanish away. Penury will vanish away. Joblessness will vanish away. And Lord, those who are selling the markets and they have not been selling, Lord, I pray all the buyers will be flowing to them flocking to them oh lord i pray you will bless them beyond their expectation in jesus name i pray for those who are married and they have not got children lord touch the husband touch the wife whatever is missing in the body do a creative miracle and give them miracle children in jesus name believe the lord you will prosper believe his prophet and you will prosper I pronounce in your life that miracle children will come to you. I pronounce in your life bias has gone away. I pronounce in your life you receive that miracle child in Jesus' name. And those who are old enough to marry, but they've been failing and they've been missing it. Lord, I pray this year they will not miss it. Revelation from heaven. Guidance from heaven. The person you have created for them, you know those people. Lead them to find each other in Jesus' name. And those who are taking exams, Lord, I pray, success has come. Failure is gone. All those tears of regret, everyone, everything is gone in Jesus' name. Now, Lord, I pray for everyone. Let the rains of miracle begin to fall. On the left, on the right, at the back, in those halls and outside there, rains of miracle in Jesus' name. Put testimony in every mouth. And Lord, I pray you drive away all those devourers and bring abundance of blessings upon their lives. Joy in every life. Laughter in every life. Prosperity in every life success in every life the past is forgotten a new day has come blessed is this man blessed is this woman everywhere you go blessed is the man where you come in blessed is the woman in your family blessed is the man in your yard blessed is the woman and the mouths of unbelievers and the mouths of gainsayers will be stopped in Jesus' name. Receive your miracle. Receive the peace of God. Receive all the deliverances he has given you. Receive the dominion. You are free. You are blessed. You are prospered. From today onwards, that better life has started. And when we see again, there will be testimony coming from everywhere. Lord, confirm it for everyone. In Jesus' name, I pray. I am blessed. I am blessed. I am blessed. I am blessed. 
nothing will take away your blessing.